Hi, this is Jamie, and this process video is for HeidiSwap.com, and you can find the link to this post down below. But what I want to do today is use a mink technique to create a title page for my 2020 family album. And so I have this idea. I've tried this before on a gift tag, but I went about it this time a little bit differently. So what you're going to need if you want to follow along here is a mink machine, mink foil. I have the cutting mat and scissors here to help me get that cut as well. I have a carrier folder for the mink machine. And then for actually making the title page itself, I have used this peel and stick adhesive sheet. And you can find this at Joanne's stores. And I have a heavy piece of cardstock. It is six inches by four inches. And I've added the adhesive to one side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel this back. I'm going to apply a piece of the reactive foil over the sticky part. I'm going to go ahead and run it through the machine. I think at that point I could go ahead and peel it right back off, but I'm going to run it through the machine just the same. Then we're going to see if we have a solid background for adding and building up some uh, a cut file and just being able to see the foil come through the opening of the cut file. Okay, let's get started. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and peel back this brown backer as I've already adhered a sheet of the adhesive to this cardstock. So this whole entire part of the cardstock is very sticky. Let me give myself a little bit of room here. And what I want to do is very carefully try and without any wrinkles to lay down the reactive foil on top of my adhesive cardstock. So let's get to work on that. And it started just sticking. So we're just going to put it where it is. I'm going to just check this to see. Yeah, I'm going to need this edge over here. So I'm just going to trim out um, one more small piece of this and cover that because I don't want to have any misses on this. Okay, like I said, I could probably go ahead and peel this up, but I'm going to run it through the machine just to make sure I have really good even coverage. That's my goal here. So I'm gonna run that through the machine and then I'll show you how that turned out. Okay, so I have already removed the background from the mink machine. And you can see here, I'm using some Winter Wonderland pattern paper. And I was just lining up the backer to my cutout just to make sure everything's covered real nice like. Okay, so just one tip here as we get started in actually making the title part of this page. Because I use the adhesive peel back adhesive sheet, I probably didn't have to run this through on a three on the machine. In the future, I think I'll just run it on one. It, it got a little too sticky when I was peeling it back. So just note to self, you probably when you're using an adhesive medium, just run it through the machine on a one. And I think you'll be happy with that result. Okay, so not only do I want the mink background to back up this die cut, but what I really want to do is to build several cutouts. I have several here on this background. And I want to have some really great dimension and you do that by building these up with cardstock. So what I did is I ran this cut file with three pieces of cardstock. And I think three pieces is enough because then I'm still going to have this pattern paper that's going to be sitting on top of it and then this backed behind it all. So what needs to happen now is that these need to be adhered together. And I do have the little cutouts from between if I choose to use them. But I don't think I'm actually going to here because I think I want to put a 20 in here later on when we get done. So I don't even know. It's like putting a puzzle piece together, but I really actually don't know if I'm going to go about and add all my little cutouts back in, but you can, that is definitely an option. Another thing I learned by doing this before, I started to use a liquid adhesive before, 
And I ended up not liking that result because it left my, and I made a tag before, it left my tag warped. And I can't do the warped, right? We have to have this as flat and as straight as possible. So what you then have to do is basically build this up and building it up with just adding this tape runner in places as best as possible. And we're not looking for this to be perfectly everything in here. You get the basis of this adhered down and you're gonna be pretty happy with how it looks. It's not gonna be gappy or anything. So I'm going to show you what it's like to put this first layer on and then you'll understand from that point, it's just now a matter of adding the other layers as well. I think I'm covered pretty good here. Now this gets a little tricky, laying these parts down right where they need to go. Cause like I said, it is like a puzzle and you've got a pretty delicate piece of cardstock here because there's so many cuts. And obviously you can use these with all kinds of cutouts. This one is a little bit longer than I have done before. The tag I did previously was, just said joy. So I was just dealing with three letters and that wasn't too hard to manipulate. This one's a little trickier and it's just gonna require a little bit of time to make sure the top piece is covering the second or the bottom piece. And I'm actually probably gonna need to use a little bit of glue on this part right here. It's so thin, I don't even wanna try to add the tape adhesive to that. So that is pretty much in place. And I'm going to just use a little bit by not using a whole bunch of glue, I think I'm going to be okay. It's when you're using a lot of glue on cardstock, even if it's made for paper, I'm never really actually totally truly happy with how it works out. Okay, so those are two layers put together. I'm just gonna go in now and add the next layer and then we'll add the pattern paper to the top. Okay, I have the top layer of the pattern paper on three layers of cardstock. And it's gonna be a little tough to tell, but this has great dimension now, it really does. And it's going to just be beautifully placed up against the mink background. And so I'm gonna, Get this all trimmed out. Like I said, this should be about a six by inch long by four inch tall title. And I'm gonna show you how this looks finished up. And then I'm gonna let you know what I'm gonna do next. Okay, there it is. I think this is super beautiful. It's got great shine. It's got great impact when you get to open this up to a page. Now I'm gonna go and create my layout and you can link down below to this post to see how this entire page turned out. But I really do hope this technique using a mink background inspires you to do for yourself. Man, you can use any shape, you can use any letters, you can still add in the cutouts and obviously that'd be covered up with pattern paper or you could leave these open spaces and do something else in there, which is what I believe I am going to be doing. So thank you for watching this video and playing along with the Mink Machine and oh, that Silver Stars foil. You must have that. That's great, great foil. And I will see you on my blog as we finish up this page.